Hey everyone, it's Ben Brandt here, back to work on another project which some of you might find familiar. It was about a year ago that I built this backlit LED sign, and I was asked to build another one of these things, so I decided we could revisit this project on video and see if we could refine the design a bit, incorporate some new construction techniques, including 3D printing, and see if we could build this thing a little better than last time. So there's some interesting bits along the way, so stick with me and we'll show you how I built it. Now the flashlight itself comes apart pretty easily by just removing a few screws, and once you've got that broken down, you can go back to the battery compartment and find the positive and negative ends of the battery compartment and trace those wires back to the circuit board. So here I've marked out the positive wire coming into the circuit board and we can trace that path all the way around through a resistor and that splits off into the four strips of LEDs on our board. Now because they're all wired up in strips like this and everything is wired in parallel, it's pretty easy to cut this thing apart and maintain most of those connections. So I've gone ahead and marked out on the board all the sections that I want to cut out and on one of them I've preserved that current limiting resistor on the end because that's part of our circuit so that's where our voltage will come in on the final build. The end of the board with the switch will also be saving. We'll cut that off and that'll become our on off switch for the sign. Now that we've got all these lines marked out of how to cut things out First, we'll just cut off the on-off switch, and that leaves us with a board just full of LEDs. And before we cut apart the LEDs, we'll take that over to the belt sander and sand off the, the rounded, shiny tips of all of the LEDs. This will take the little spotlight effect that you get off of each LED and diffuse that light really well right at the source. The light emitting part of the LED is actually lower down inside of the casing, so by sanding off the tips you're not damaging anything, just helping diffuse that light. Once all those LEDs are sanded down, we can bring it back to the bandsaw and start cutting apart each strip. And now we've got four separate strips of six LEDs apiece, ready to get rebuilt into one LED strip. Now here's where this version of the project really starts to differ from the last one. Last time I used wood and hot glue and super glue to put these things together into one LED strip. This time around we're going to work in some 3D printing. Now I want to connect these four strips of LEDs together and I'd like to keep them uh, rigid in one piece. So I've measured up the diameter and spacing of all the LEDs and modeled up some brackets in Fusion 360 that I can then print out to connect each strip together. Now my first version was just a bracket that connected each one together and then I realized I could really use a way to mount these to the, the inside of the box. So I went back to my bracket design and added on another flange and, and hole so I could have a part that would let me mount it to the inside of the box. So I used one of my original connectors and two of my mounting connectors and then assembled and glued all four strips together with those connectors. This gave me a nice rigid LED strip that I could then flip over and solder together all the connections on the back. I had to make sure that each strip got aligned with all the positive ends lining up with all the other positive ends and the negatives to the negatives so that I could connect each one with just a, a simple wire between each strip. Now with all four strips soldered together, I could then go to the end with the resistor on it and hook up a positive wire on the other end of the resistor to provide our voltage coming in and then hook a negative wire up to any one of the negative terminals on the LEDs. This way we've recreated the same circuit that was inside the flashlight but just in a different shape. And I used a little super glue and activator to hold those incoming wires in place so nothing could come loose. Thank you. 
With the LED strip assembled, I could then figure out how big the overall box would have to be. And in this case, I simplified my box design quite a bit from the last version. So I ripped a board down on the table saw to the final depth of my box, and then cut a dado slot down one edge that would hold the plexiglass in the, in the final frame. From there, I cut the top and bottom and sides and put 45 degree miters on each piece so that they could all fit together in one rectangular box. And the dado slot would let our semi-transparent white plexiglass fit inside. Once I had all of my pieces cut, I glued up and nailed all of the miter joints to hold the corners together, filled my nail holes with some wood filler, and sanded everything smooth. Now I left the back open to hold a flat plate which will hold all of our electronics. Now that I had the flat plate to hold all of the electronics, I could then figure out where everything would go and design a new battery compartment for this thing. Now one of the flaws with the previous LED sign was that it was a bit difficult to get at the batteries to replace them. So I wanted my batteries accessible from the outside so I wouldn't have to take apart the box to get at them. So to design this battery compartment, I needed to get three batteries all stacked up in a line in order for it to fit well into the, the back panel. So I started by measuring out the AAA batteries to figure out how big they were, and then I went back to the battery compartment on the flashlight and measured out the little pockets on, on each end that held the metal terminal connectors so I could reuse those in my new battery compartment. So I modeled all of this up and I added some flanges around the outside so that I could mount this thing from the back and have it flush with the outside of the panel. This will make more sense later on when you see it fit in. So after some time in the 3D printer, I had my new battery compartment. The fit was a little bit tight, but I managed to get the the metal uh, positive and negative terminals pressed into the battery compartment from the flashlight and fed the wires out the two ends. And once I confirmed that the battery compartment would work, I placed it into the back panel and cut a couple pieces of wood to fit around the back side of it and glued them in to hold the battery compartment in place. Next I took the switch that we saved from the original flashlight, which also has a couple mounting holes in it, and reused some of the screws to screw it into that back panel as well, through a square hole. Now that I had the LED strip, the batteries, and the switch all mounted in place, it was just a matter of soldering everything together. I ran the positive wire from the battery compartment into one end of the switch, and then connected the other end of the switch to the positive end of our LED strip, and then took the negative wire off the LEDs and ran that back to the negative side of the battery compartment. Once everything was assembled, I masked off the plexiglass and gave everything a good coat of black paint. Now this still leaves the battery compartment open on the outside, so I ran a couple of bolts out from the back side of the panel and then cut a small black plastic strip to go across the outside of the battery panel and held that on with a couple of wing nuts. So now it's very easy to just uncover the battery compartment, replace the batteries if you need to, and nobody has to remove any screws on the box. The end result turned out great. This thing lights up really bright and really evenly and provides a great backdrop for any kind of letters or logos or graphics you want to put on the outside of your backlit sign. So I really like how this one turned out. I hope this inspires you to get out and make something of your own or hack into some other electronics you may have around your house. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next project video. Thanks.